nature has announced itself. Wilfred is a self-described homebody, a man of creature comforts, of cosy nights by the fire with interesting books, tricky crosswords, or captivating films. Over the years, he's constructed a world of convenience. He has his groceries delivered each week, works solely from his home office, and frequently goes days without venturing outside. He is by no means reclusive, however, or misanthropic, and he certainly never suffers from boredom. A week won't go by without him seeing friends or family, be it dinner parties, casual gatherings, board game evenings, wine tastings, or his monthly book club night. Constantly commended for his superb hospitality, he relishes every chance to host and demonstrate his culinary prowess. And on those rare occasions where he's required to make some kind of visit, he simply strolls into the garage, climbs into his car, and drives away in leather-seated luxury. His outdoorsy friends often tease him about how divorced he is from nature, and in response he'll simply laugh and say, guilty as charged. The exterior world simply doesn't interest him. Why contend with inconveniences like wind and rain, or endure the sun beating down on his shoulders and sweat streaming from his pores? To him, nature is something to be observed in high-definition documentaries and non-fiction books. He's never owned a pet, or even a houseplant, and his rear courtyard is just a stark section of concrete with an iron bench in the centre. On cooler days, he'll sit here to read, happily shaded by his next-door neighbour's enormous oak tree. Wilfred believes that mankind's greatest achievement was the development of this secondary world, a separate indoor dimension concealed from the capricious forces of the earth. Nature has never been more to him than a distant acquaintance whose exploits he can't help hearing about from time to time. Like now, for instance. Our advice is to stay indoors tonight, a weatherman announces through the television. Do not leave your home unless absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary is a broad term, but to Wilfred it's particularly abstract. He outwardly scoffs as he sits with a warm cup of cocoa. What possible reason could he ever have for heading out there? An old proverb describes necessity as the mother of invention. It certainly facilitated all the home comforts he enjoys, from the essentials such as shelter and heating, to the luxuries of smart home systems and video communication. But Mother Nature is the principal inventor, the giver and nurturer of life in all its manifestations. And just as the weatherman claimed, she's stirring up a storm beyond Wilfred's four walls. Suddenly, his TV loses its connection and reverts to a blank screen and message. No signal due to bad weather. Wilfred sighs, turns it off, and picks up a novel he's been meaning to finish. But before long, the wind starts to hum against his windows, Mother Nature whispering to him from outside. While he ignores her and continues to read, the howling soon becomes louder, accompanied now with a patter of rain, then eventually followed by low rumbles of thunder. They're far away though, no more than a delicate murmur in the distance. He focuses on his book, sips his cocoa, and knows that this all shall pass. It's merely a disturbance in the atmosphere, low pressure within a high pressure system, resulting in winds, heavy rain, and the formation of storm clouds. At his ripe old age, Wilfred has lived through many, and he doubts this one will hold any more significance. His home is solid and resilient, practically impenetrable. Unlike his neighbors, he has no silly ornaments to be disturbed, no trees to be uprooted, or flimsy fences to be felled. Just a concrete courtyard with sturdy stone walls and a bench firmly fixed to the floor. But he flinches as a dim glow of lightning lights up his window, and the prompt crash of thunder informs him of its looming proximity. Soon this external cacophony grows so loud that he can't follow the story he's reading, and his eyes are drawn to his coffee table, the newspaper he'd thrown down this morning without bothering to read. Now part of the front page headline jumps out at him. Storm of the century. He reaches for the paper, 
then jolts with fright as the next lightning bolt illuminates the whole room. Its thunderous crash comes not a second later. That one was close. Too close. He holds the broadsheet with a quivering hand, attempts to read the first line. Boom! Another brilliant flash of light brightens his living room. Then darkness, total blackout. He stands up and stumbles to the wall, groping for the nearest light switch, pressing it in vain. He owns no torches or candles, and it's now too dark to glimpse the hand he waves in front of his face. He slowly fills his way upstairs, towards his bedroom where he'd left his phone on charge. All the while strong gales are rattling his walls and window frames. The heavy hammering of rain intensifies, thudding, pounding, with no indication of easing. The wind is howling now. Nature is screaming, Wilfred, Wilfred, I am here. Staggering up the staircase, he's halted by a near deafening bang. The ceiling above him splits open, and a whoosh of cold night air rushes through the breach. Long leafy tendrils hang down, clawing at the dark. It takes him a moment to process what's happened. The trunk of a huge tree has collided with his house, smashed through the roof and thrusted into his landing. It's a tall proud oak from his neighbour's back garden, a tree older than himself ripped from its roots and toppled like a domino. The black sky bears down on him between splintered tiles and plasterboard, spitting down rain that drenches his carpet, his shoulders, his face. Upon the next spiteful burst of lightning, Wilfred falls to his knees, sobbing, cowering like a child. Nature has announced itself, the nature that was always there. Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and a like and a share would also be much appreciated.